Today on The Breakfast, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control has warned of possible heat wave of COVID-19 virus in the country, given the resurrection and the number of confirmed cases. What's the impact of this on public health? Also on The Breakfast, presidency reacts to video by terrorists threatening President Mohammed Buhari and flogging kidnapped train passengers describing it as a propaganda, adding that security agencies are on top of the matter. Is this the best way to go? We will be reviewing all of the bigger stories, making the headlines across major dailies. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. As always, we start off with our top trending conversation. And our top for us this morning is the Abuja Kaduna train victims tortured by bandits. Now, the abductors of the Kaduna Abuja train passengers have released another video which is making the rounds and has gotten a lot of Nigerians talking. Uh, where victims were being flogged by this terrorist has really had breaking. This terrorist had attacked the Abuja Kaduna train on March the 28th, killing eight and kidnapping no fewer than 61 passengers. The managing director of the Bank of Agriculture, Alwan Hassan, was the first to be released after it was reported that he paid a 100 million naira ransom on April the 7th. 75 days after the incident, the terrorists also released 11 persons held in captivity, which according to uh, the negotiator, uh, Tuko Mamo, uh, media consultant to the Islamic cleric Shaikh Gumi, uh, described it as an achievement, you know, following series of robust engagement with these terrorists. I mean, one begins to wonder, we have mediators, people who are mediating with terrorists. We know them. We... Uh, with the approval of the federal government. And so there's a lot of conversation, uh, there's a lot that follows. The first is, you know, it brings to bear the question of when the president came in. I mean, 2015, you had a lot of campaign, the APC came. You need to look at that video and also have in mind that across the globe, generally, in every clime, the number one responsibility of every government is that lives and properties will be protected. That's your number one job as a government everywhere in the world. Security, protection of lives and property is the number one responsibility of every government. It's a universal thing when it, it has to do with government. So there's no excuse. Now, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, guarantees that as well that, you know, the welfare of the people and all of that will be the concern of government. Now, it's, it, it's also, you know, a question, especially when you know that uh, this government came on the strength of saying, hey, we will crush Boko Haram in three months and we would ensure that lives and properties are secured. That's, that's on that promise that they came through. Three mantras you want to see or three points that they stand on. Security, the fight against corruption and the economy. But... Isn't it an irony that we're where we are today? There's been a lot of, you know, talks about uh, government's efforts. And recently, the government has also, the presidency has responded, you know, to um, the, the video and saying, hey, it's, it's a propaganda. It's a universal tool globally where you have terrorists trying to force government uh, to heed to all of this action. But Nigerians are asking too many questions, especially when the president had promised that, you know, the issue of insecurity would be, story would be in the past. What happens to the Tucano jets that we had received? And we know that we received the last batch, 12 of them. It was said that, you know, the, the Tucano jets was going to be a game changer for the fight against insecurity. I mean, we know that this was what the government said, 12 of this Tucano jet. And it's not a joke because we have expanded. It's not like we got this jet because the United States and all the parts were very, uh, you know, happy and said, hey, Nigerians, you guys are fantastic, so let's just donate Tucano jets to you. 
but we were told that these two candidates would be a game changer. And, you know, the uh, northeastern part of the country, all of the insecurity issues would be um, far-fetched stories. But what's happening? Has, has the military deployed this to Kano Jets? What's going on? What happened? These bombers, that's what we're told. What's really going on? It's very unfortunate. It's very sad. It's really, really... If you look at that video and see how um, these persons are being maltreated, these are taxpayers, persons who pay their taxes. At the end of the day, where's the law of social contract? Has it been respected? The government, on the other hand, would do its beat, and the people will pay their taxes. Saddening. I'm not sure you want to be in that situation. You cannot imagine. But I'd like you to take, you know, imagine, put yourself in their shoes. Imagine what they've been going through. I mean, this is just one, the tip of the iceberg. Imagine what has been going on, the things that we have not seen. But away from that, it's just a reminder that government has a responsibility and it is your responsibility that lives and properties are protected. Uh, the response of government is saying that, hey, the military is on top of the issue and, you know, the military is not, uh, it's not, not, it's not that the military is not aware of what's going on, but hey, is the military really aware? Are, are the peace personnel really aware? What's really going on? Is it that we don't have the wheel? Are we in bed with these persons? What could be the issue? We have the clues. We understand. We know these people. Their identity is not hidden. Why haven't we swung into, or swung into action if, if, you know, that's anything to go by? And with the fact that this terrorist would actually threaten the number one citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the one, number one citizen. Now, it's, n it's not even a threat. Would you say that that's just a threat? Because we also know that just recently, the president's uh, advance team was attacked. It's just, it's just a mere threat. But that's the much we can take on that. We'll move away to a fantastic story because, I mean, we need to celebrate this one. Toby Amosu breaks the 100 meters hurdles record. And uh, she's a Nigerian. She, she actually ran for 12.40 uh, uh, plus 1.5 millimeters to break her own record uh, for Africa. It's the biggest thing that's happened in the history. Uh, we do have a track. We quickly just come to this. We listen to this, and when we return, we'll continue with the conversation. Please stay with us. Start there from Danielle Williams. Kumbunji is away and running, but Toby Amasan with her normal fantastic start. Technically so perfect, the Nigerian. And that looks so easy. Points to the sky. She liked that 12.4 for Toby Amasan. And if that time stays as it, as it is, that would be... A new national record for Nigeria. Well, it's it's been said that is the fastest heat time ever. Uh, you definitely have at the global championship. Nigerians are making us really proud, despite the fact that we have recorded zero medals yet. But you look at that; it's it's a great one. And Toby and Morrison, we're really proud of you. I mean, looking at that. You would always associate when you see the race, you would say Kenyans would always be on top of this one. But she just did another one, the AR, and we're very expecting that, hey, whatever happens, maybe a medal will definitely come out of this. We're proud of you. We're proud of everyone that's out there. It, it just gladdens our heart that we see you making us proud, despite all of the odds. And so uh, let's move away from that. Another interesting conversation. It's... Uh, uh, that you have residents reacting to Abiodun's visit to Shango Ota. Now, this resident reacted when Governor Abiodun paid the visit. Some people would say an August vis visit to, you know, the location. And so those mixed reaction when he visited the community, there were road issues. I mean, uh, if you have seen that video, I'm sure that we're able to pop that up or put that up right on screen uh, where it was flooded. Uh, you could see the floods and you could see everything. The road is horrible and uh, members of these communities were really talking. Now, let's, let me bring you uh, to speed with some of the reactions. Some people were saying that the governor had wanted to, uh, he came through, he was going, you know, his normal, uh, going to his business or just going about his business. 
uh, then unfortunately he met that and he was trying to get his convoy to divert that particular part because you had the road being flooded and it would be poor drainage system, bad roads and what have you. And the people insisted that he has to go through that particular spot. We can't really ascertain what the true situation was with that. But the truth is, was there a bad road? I mean, is there a problem? Was there a problem? Yes, flood is a major issue. Uh, you know, you look at the potholes and all of that. He's the governor of that particular state. And we hear different stories saying he's saying, oh, he's going to be committed to ensuring that the roads are being fixed. It brings us back to the question. It's not just in Ogun State. It cuts across the entire 36 states of the Federation. Maybe, and just maybe, excluding the FCT, because some people say the roads in the FCT and, you know, the infrastructure are probably just be different. And that's why the president might not understand when people talk about, you know, poor infrastructure across the <laughs> the country. I know a colleague who was saying, what are you talking about? The roads here have fantastic roads. It's that... The, the situation, including the suburbs and the satellite towns, would that be the situation? But you ask yourself again, we are taxpayers, taxpayers, constantly paying taxes. What's the primary responsibility of government? Providing the basic amenities. You talk about road infrastructure. Should it be rocket science? Why don't we, as old as we are as a country, can we really boast that we have a good road network. And we understand how that's connected to economic development and what happens, especially when you say people are involved in agriculture, transportation of goods and services, transportation of people from one point to the other, especially when you have the airlines being, <laughs> you know, just having one or two issues. Really, why is it difficult for us to have proper road infrastructure across the entire country? Governors of state, is this, is this impossible? Why? Why really? What's the problem? It's just simple. Provide the people with the basic things that they need. Just the basic things. It's like you belong to a family. There's a father and there's a mother. There's a family. It's just, it's just basic that they will provide certain things until you get to a, you know, a point where you're able to fend for yourself or cater for yourself. And what are these basic things that the people have? Power supply, uh, road infrastructure, and just access to medical care. Nigerians would pay for these things. I mean, you will talk about tax payment and all of that. But, you know, it's impossible. We don't really care about that. But every other time, you have our leaders who jet out of this country. And then when they go out to other parts of the world, they see this road. I mean, don't you always feel that it, it could have been happening in your own space? What is so difficult for us to provide the basic things that people need? Well, that's the much on all we can take this morning on Top Trending. We take a break, and when we return... Uh, would be looking at uh, the front pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. Okunabo and Katara will join us, all things being equal. Please stay with us.